One of the early INSEAD MBAs actually liked the school so much he came back as dean and stayed for 15 years. And he's with us today. Claude Remo, good to see you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. 15 years is a long time to be a dean. Why, why were you here so long? I was co-dean with successively with Alstaneiser and then with Wipnart and finally with Ludo van der Rede. Very different people. Very different people with different styles, different profiles and so on. And I would say we survived together at a time where nobody was really believing it could work. Having a dual management at the top was perceived by faculty members, staff and board members as a challenge. Believing that after two or three years of the experience it would collapse and we, we should come back to a more classical structure with the director general and the dean as it was before. And finally it worked. And it worked because it corresponded to uh, the need of INSEAD to have a multicultural type of management. And uh, one of the dean of the co-dean being more devoted to external relations, management, uh, campuses, uh, general strategy, the other one being more academic. But in fact, we survived because we had the same culture. You, you really took a different approach to business education here in Europe than in the U.S. And the program was shorter. The emphasis was not so much on the MBA. How did you come up with this different structure? I would say it was very clear. So in the first year, during the first years, okay, the only thing we could do was to ensure that we could be credible as an institution. We started by some kind of MBA. It, it was not called an MBA at that time. It was called the postgraduate program. And we called it we named it an MBA much later. And so the culture was to repeat and to copy what was going on in the US. In Europe, in fact, the real need for management education was an addition to something which was very good and in-depth in terms of education. At the same time, the main need in management education was executive education because people in companies were not really educated on management. In management. At the same time, and when INSEAD was created, it was more or less at the same time that Europe was created through the Rome Treaty and so on. So suddenly, European companies were confronted to competition, going cross-border, and then confronting a completely new set of strategical issues. And so their need as companies, the need of managers, well, and top managers, middle managers, but really to be educated as quickly as possible on management and modifying their attitude, their knowledge, their expertise, and so on. And so we discovered that the, the real market for management education in Europe was on executive education, not on the MBA side. And so very quickly, we understood that. So we needed about 10 years, and we needed to have full-time faculty members really to, to cope with it. And finally, we did it. And suddenly between 70, 68 and 73, it was a five years period where we really defined the, the overall INSEAD strategy after more or less 40 years, educating individuals, so top managers, middle managers, and senior managers, at the same time, helping companies internationally to create a critical mass of educated managers inside the same corporation. At the same time, Okay, we were asked by companies to serve them and to educate individual top managers. So we create executive education. And finally, the notion of critical mass inside a company was coming up and we created a department called MDU, the Management Development Unit, to create company-specific activities for companies. So over five years, these three phenomena were really converging and pushing INSEAD to invest a lot in executive education, and we became very rapidly the leading institution worldwide on executive education because of that. And the final result of it is this kind of executive education activities made a lot of money. So we made a lot of margin. So it fed, in fact, the development of INSEAD intellectually. So we were able from that first to educate and to recruit better educated faculty members in larger number. So it was, a, it was a program that elicited a lot of money and has also gotten some great success. I mean, the students who graduated, 
I don't know if we were good or not, but in fact, we had very, very little competition from other business schools. So the only competition at that time was the, an institution in Geneva called CI in Sweden. Huh? The other one was IMEDE, and it was more or less it at that time. The real competition for executive education was not coming from the US, the US business school. The rare business school being good in executive education were four or five. So the best at that time were Stanford, Harvard, MIT, Chicago. And because we were unable to do it in terms of quality of our teachers, we were, we were absolutely obliged to have connections and agreement with this institution. And we signed agreement with Stanford, the first one for developing the AMP, the Advanced Management Program. Second one, we, we made a connection with Columbia, at that time was a leading institution in executive education for the middle managers program. And we had an agreement for marketing courses with the British management of marketing. And so these three dimensions started and they will help us tremendously. Let me end by asking you, what role should INSEAD play in reshaping the world economy? I mean, clearly there is a change going on. I don't think we're going to go back to what we had before. What role should INSEAD play here? I would say we have an impact in preparing people to be a manager of the world. And the name of INSEAD corresponds to that. The ambition is there. We are helping, in my opinion, people who are passing through INSEAD activities, either at the MBA level or an executive, are quitting in the INSEAD campus with more understanding of what's going on. Now, could we go further? Could we aim at having a more political impact? Okay? At a given time, 25 years ago, with a dean who was Uwe Kitzinger, we believe we could have an impact in reshaping the European system. And so it was a dilemma now for five, five years. Could we really more focusing on Europe and neglecting some other parts of the world? And finally, the answer is no. We have to go to the world. We have now a campus in Singapore. We are now in Abu Dhabi. And we, could, we have connection with Brazil. We are in the US, as you mentioned, in a different way. We are looking at Africa and uh, Southeast Asia. Now the former Eastern countries are in more and more. So we are really a worldwide institution. And because of the financial crisis, for example, what kind of role could we play? Could we modify the attitude? Could we modify the culture? Maybe. But we are already doing that in a way because people quitting the campus are quite different when they are quitting in comparison with the, way, the, the time they enter the campus. So we are having an impact anyway. Could we have more systematic impact? For sure. The more systematic impact could be through publication, more research, more articles, more publication, more TV interview, more uh, now internet positioning, and so on and so on. More diffusion, largely. And, uh, but we have already an impact. We could be more precise from time to time. Thank you very much for being with us, Claude Rameau. Merci.